What's the mask for? To protect my identity. This is the brake line that's leaking. As you can see, we do a calibrated test. Welcome to General Aviation. There is a million dollar SR-22, and there is, I don't know, a $50,000 Grumman. They both get the same shop rate. Here we are. Hey man, the right mixture doesn't work good. That's my squawk. Wow, you have to be Hercules to do it. I don't want to break it. I want to see what's so wrong the with STCs it. STCs on this Baron are for turbos. The original OEM turbos on this were both shot and then it sat for three years waiting to get the STC done for the new turbos that are on it now. And now it's here for annual. And our first squawk is that the right mixture so there, is done. There is the mixture cable and squawk one, there's no cotter pin on it. So mixture is completely froze. You can see the stop in the top left corner of the screen. You can see the stop contact kind of the middle bottom. I just say, try to use a pair of pliers and manually actuate it. See if we can get it going just to start it. All right, we got it on full rich. It is really, really difficult to move. So we're gonna get start it, get it cranked up, warmed up so we can start draining oil and then we'll fix the mixture cable after we get it over there to do compression. Okay, Mike got the cable freed up out there. Still a lot of resistance toward the bottom end. All right, so the goal is this mixture cable is basically frozen. We'll use the fuel selector to shut it off and it's going into maintenance. So that's why we would do that standard practice. So that would not be okay. Get it. There it is. The turbos are tricky. We huh. fixed it. We're that good. So it's a temperature related issue. <laughs> of course the oil panel is up under the belly. It's got a slight leak. This is a weird engine. As you can see, it says like homing, but there ain't no push rod tubes up there. They're on the bottoms. And it has these weird things over some of the spark plug leads, which is weird. The whole thing is weird. That's all right. As long as we get these compressions done. Keep turning it. Keep turning it. Come on. Come on, keep going. There it is. Stop, right there. Right there. Well, at least we know number six has got good compression. <laughs> this is confusing. This is a number one stamped on the cylinder. A number six stamped on the cylinder. Somebody wrote number two on the intake tube. This one's got a three intake tube. has got a four. This one's got a five intake tube has got a six. It yeah, it's got a two there and the other number be covered up. My guess is it's one, three, five, like normal. It's just the push rod tubes are on the bottom. So somebody thought it was a, like a continental. I just removed the cowling with my awesome new snap on indexing ratchet and I'm rolling under to go to the other cowling. And as I'm rolling, I notice this. It's just a slight, a slight major fuel leak. Also the wing root seal is missing here, but um, where this is coming from, it's probably gonna be the fuel bladder under that panel, but we're gonna stick to doing pulling plugs now. So we had to get these bottom cows off first and I'll come back to that fuel leak. Let's go over to this side. As you can see, this bladder, everything looks good. It's dry, it's not blue, so you're not on camera. You guys 
can all do what you want, but uh, you won't see me using an electric drill or screwdriver to take this off, especially when there's gas leaking. Could be vapors, and I want to make it home for the night. All right, so it looks like it's got a leak that originates here and comes down. Um, but one would originally think that like, hey, we've got a leaking fuel drain, but where it's coming out here doesn't coincide with that. You see it's all in there and I don't want to get too close to it. So I'm going to zoom. If I zoom in here, all that's blue. So it's blue towards the leading edge of the wing. And then when I go towards the leading edge, I also see it's like blue leaking from there as well. So we'll probably wind up pulling the leading edge of the wing just to determine what's going on. But my guess is that the bladder is leaking and that's what's causing all the fuel drainage issues. It also looks like we've got a hydraulic leak, so more fun, more fun. This plug proved difficult to remove, which is really weird considering the rest of the plugs are covered in oil. Yeah. If you want to be an A&P, Learn how to use a screw extractor correctly. Let's see if we can get good. There we go. So our fuel leak here looks like it's dripping down from here, and that is fuel bladder. So. So I sprayed it with alcohol, and as sure as we're sitting here, we have got fuel leaking right now. They're about to turn the fuel pumps on. Yeah. Okay, you can turn it off. So we turn the fuel pump on to see if we can see where the gas is coming out of. We'll find it here in a second. I'll update you. I don't know if you guys can. You can really see it with this light, but like there's blue coming out of there and then all on the underside of that is wet. So we're gonna have to... Well, that ground is no good. What about this ground? The ground cables are like disintegrating. Look at that. So I had mentioned the brake hydraulic fluid on the bottom. The gear in this plane are electric. So the only thing hydraulic that could be leaking on the bottom of the plane is hydraulic fluid. And the only system that uses that is the brakes. And you can see it pouring out the top right there. So we're gonna add rebuilding brakes to the squawks on this bird. The snap-on screwdriver was a gift. And it's not a flip-flop, it's just a regular ratcheting screwdriver, the nicest one that I have. But one of the things that is good about it, even though it's not a flip-flop, the cap stores an extra bit. And that will double as a stubby screwdriver. So in this situation where I have a screw right there, it works pretty good for getting stuff out. Doing the interior in this barren. I have no idea where all this dirt came from. Dirt. Dirt, dirt everywhere. Maybe there's an ant nest somewhere in here that we're about to find. So, <laughs> I have a few more pieces of FOD to add to my FOD bag. There's a lot of junk in there. This plane is filthy. I'm now the brand new owner of this nice pen and a lead for a multimeter. Pro tip, get you a cushion so you don't have to lay on the seat rails. Let's check out. Ugh. And I still need to clean up everything so then the eye can come do his inspection. But I already know that we've got a serious brake line leaks. So I don't know if you can see, that's all wet. Both brakes will need to be rebuilt. If you follow the fluid down, there's the panel that we removed. So that's where the fluid's pulling up on the underside of the plane. Watch this, somebody really did not care. Oh, let me turn my flashlight on. Doing the same, there we go. It's raining fun. 
I have a ton of cleaning to go. I'm actually gonna take the um, heating duct out, but you can see, I don't know if you can see, there's just flipping trash everywhere. So much trash, but this thing was dirty and filthy and covered up and look at that. So we're gonna squawk it, keep going, but like it, it see where it was green. It looks like it's got a lot of wear on that piece. And I don't see there. It looks like another possible crack right there on that side. That's this is why it's important to clean when you inspect because a lot of stuff is gonna hide from you and you won't be able to see it. Like that. Okay, I got it basically stripped. Luckily, there's a bunch of panels in the back that you can see all the cables and feel them without removing this interior piece which I'm happy about. But as far as removing all that wood, what I do is I'm gonna write the number on the wood. The number doesn't matter. All that matters is the screws that go on this board are the same number. And then I'll put them together. And even if they get separated, hey, these numbers go together. It saves you some frustration. Slowly working my way to the back of the Baron, getting the interior out so we can see cables and everything. And, see that right there? You know what that is? That's poop. It's poop from a mouse or a lizard. But judging by the tunneling, I'd say there's a mouse in here somewhere. my collection of fods so far these are things that i found under the floor panels not like under the seats or something but no like legitimately under the floor panels a lot of avionics stuff up under the dash but now i'm gonna got my alcohol and my rags and i got my vacuum cleaner in here i'll be hanging out cleaning that filthy front so the eye i can run through it and actually see cracks and stuff because right now you can't see nothing so i found my part number 63 is where that crack is sixty-three is the nose gear attract idler so that ain't gonna be good. We got it out where we can actually see it. Took this side plate off and guess what? Not a crack. Die pendant looked like a crack. Everything else looked like a crack, but this one not the crack. Alright we hit it with a polishing wheel and Sure enough, it's just a super deep scratch, which is why it showed up on die pins. It was a super deep gouge in the metal, um, but it's not serious because it doesn't go down too far. There is a brass bushing in there that's not affected. So this is what I wrote for us. So next year, when we do the annual, we'll know that that crack was already looked at. It's nothing official. And if he takes it to another shop, or if I saw that and I didn't recognize the initials, I would probably die pen it or blemish it again to make sure that it's not a crack so it's nothing official but it just save you time for the next time you do an annual because you'll know oh we've already looked at that i'm still cleaning um but the mountain of mess that was there is not just dirt stuck to the floor so we're making progress so on this pulley i showed it earlier but you can see the indentations of the cable in the pulley that usually means that cable tension is probably not right but if you listen we call this a ratcheting pulley, is the way it sounds. So this pulley is gonna get changed and quite a few other pulleys are gonna get changed as well. Let's see what this one sounds like. Yeah, it's doing the same thing. Just for reference, let me show you guys, like this is the newest pulley that I found. Listen to this one. See how you can't hear anything? All right, so our experienced mechanic went ahead and wrote replace plug on the valve covers. 
we ordered new ones, but this will also help on the entry so we'll know which ones we replaced. Sometimes things happen so fast and the owners might say, what cylinders did you replace it on? Not like it matters, but still, it's good to know. Also, we got a pretty good oil leak on this one coming from the seals. And we've also got the same leak on this seal as well. And that one actually might be coming from the valve cover. And probably a little bit of both, honestly, but it's got oil on it. It's got oil in it. Just a quick short to everybody out there. Just curious, what are y'all using to vacuum in places like this? We had to go between a bunch of stupid cables. Hit me up in the comments. Appreciate it. Thank All you. Right. We have the whole team over here helping with panels today. And I want you to repeat what you just said. Well, first I asked what what would be leaking blue and sticky, and uh, we got a we got a leaking fuel bladder up in here. So <laughs> I knew it was leaking, but apparently it's leaking out here as well as the inboard one. So it's probably inboard. running down this channel and then hiding until there, which is common. Hey, it's common. probably leaking out the engine too. That's it. It can that's leak out the engine. That's fine. So <laughs> the de-icing boots on the propellers. I don't know how well they're working. That one, you know what, that one may be doing something, you know? Who knows, maybe it's grounding out through the uh, aircraft. But this one, uh, I, think we can repair that one. I don't think that one's working. And for reference, here's a working unit that is attached to the propeller. That's where it uh, goes into the prop at, and uh, that's where it hooks up. Send it. All right, we're finally removing the brakes. I've been trying to clean this plane as well as I can clean it, but if you'll notice, I have not cleaned this section yet. And that's because I knew I was gonna make a mess, which is fine. Look at this. Like, this is just fluid sitting on top of it from the leak. But, I'll have both these off and rebuilt. Shouldn't take too I also read the comments and some of you guys said, no Nipix in aircraft maintenance. Well, Look what I'm using. The Nipix. Or the Knipix. I don't know how to say it. All I know is that they work really good. I'm in the middle of removing these brakes and see if you guys can see that bolt gets removed directly into a plate. I don't know why you would install the bolt that way and why you would not install the bolt on the head side. This is a perfectly level piece. That right there. It's why I drink Mountain Dew. Screw you, Bo! <laughs> the priority right now is to get the brakes rebuilt. I will deal with this later. So really what I'm doing is just moving work down the road. But when I look in the IPC for this, my hopes is gonna be that the bolts goes in from the other way. But if I did put the bolt in the other way, I don't see what would be the issue, as this is a perfectly level piece of equipment. Yeah, there you go. Take that bolt. Back to the brakes. Um, I'm in the IPC, and it does not specify directions for the bolts. You know, if you look at a newer manual, it's going to have a diagram with like a bolt and a dotted line to tell you the direction it should go through. This does not have it. There's my stack up for bolt washer nut cotter pin. And then I cross-referenced that with the actual maintenance manual on installing and removing it. Here's the instructions for removing and installing the brake master cylinders on the end of the pedals. Close the parking brake, unsnap the floor mat, disconnect the two brake hydraulic lines at each master cylinder and mark the locations. Remove the master cylinder attaching bolts, nuts, and remove the master cylinders. If the new ones are installed, we're not doing that. We're just doing new, we're doing a new stack up on them. We're just replacing O-rings there and there, and uh, reinstall the master cylinders by reversing removal procedure, replenish and bleed the hydraulic system. So it doesn't specify here, it does not specify here. AC 4313 tells me that as long as it's not at a crazy angle, 45 degree angle, it's straight 90, it's going straight through, I can just install the bolt the other way and it won't be an issue. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, both of those have been removed. It's actually a good chance to inspect the back side of the pedals with the brakes off because it's easier to see them. Nothing major, a couple nicks. But what's interesting is that there is hydro all over this line 
and all over this plate. And that doesn't make any sense based off it leaking out the reservoir for the brake cylinders. So I'm thinking that the angle that this is bent to is causing this line to leak. So I'm gonna take this line off and we're gonna pressure test it to see if this fitting is leaking. Um, Cause I already suspect it is most likely leaking. So luckily there's a coupling right there. So we'll take it off there and there. And one little stupid nail. Using the wear set for this. So I got a screwdriver and then I got a nut on that end I'll get with the little baby Nippix. But if you've ever been in a Baron, it's got these weird rises over the seats. And the way that I'm in the plane, it's just weird. So having that tool case really helps out because I don't have to keep getting in and out of the plane to get stuff. I have, you know, most of what I need if I forget some. What's the mask for? To protect my identity. This is the brake line that's leaking. As you can see, we do a calibrated test. It's leaking from this bottom piece right here. Can you zoom in? It's leaking because it got pinched right here. And if we go over there and look at the floorboard, you'll see why the floorboard is sagging, hitting the top of this line. And then it causes it to chafe right there on the back side of the, what is that called? Rotunda. Sleeve. The back side of the sleeve. Causes it to chafe on the back side of the sleeve, leading to it leaking as seen here. So you can see that's where the two brake lines were hitting the floorboard. The floorboard is actually sagging a little bit when you look at it from the edge and over the time and with foot pressure on it, I'm sure it sags worse, cause it to pinch the sleeve like that. Hey, we're making them. Right now, we're talking about getting part numbers and ordering new panels. This is the pilot floorboard here. But you can see like, here's where the support runs. And if you look at it, you can actually see it go down where feet are. So this is the middle, nobody's feet goes here, it's fine. But here's the floor and that's where the feet go right here. And sure enough, I mean, it's a, Enough deviation that you can see it, so it's there. Mm. So we had to manually depress the gear, that one right there, in order to grease all the fittings. Um, sometimes I'm not sure if other shops grease the grease fittings, which are there to be greased. I guess if you hit it every other annual, it's okay. What are your thoughts on that? That seems fitting. Is that what they taught you in school? Every Some... other, every other annual? Hey. Now, when we actuate it through, it'll spread that grease around. All right, our shop is so weird. We get so many random things that come through here. Yeah, y'all need to see that. That's that's disgusting. Um, we're getting this annual knocked out. Like we said, we found a good bit of things wrong with it. But this is the kind of the story because it's an older aircraft. It's just kind of how it goes. But you know, with these now, it's like, hey, well, we need parts, and we don't have parts. Um, I'm about to go dig on the floor panels and I'm curious to see what it's gonna look like. We're probably gonna have to wind up making them. Check it out, I made this wood drawer for my box. I gotta finish it, but uh, pretty happy with it so far. It comes out in good ways. So we call them ratcheting pulleys. In the AC4313, it tells you on the previous page, inspect pulleys for roughness. It even says, during inspection, rotate the pulleys. So, when you rotate it, you can actually feel it. And that's what it looks like. And you guys heard what it sounded like. Okay, we're nearing the end of the annual for the Baron. This is everything, kind of the major stuff that we found. Everything with a purple star by it is an airworthiness issue. And I've got an IA right next to me. You can help sort this out. So why is the property icing not airworthiness because that's going to confuse people so it's a the airplane is operated under part 91 okay part 91 aircraft and the prop de ice is not on the uh it's not a requirement under 91 205 and or it's not a requirement for the this airplane's old so it doesn't have a kinds of operation uh limitation section in the 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 poh or whatever but um so it's optional equipment basically. So as long as it's under 91.213 disabled and placarded, then uh, it's a non-issue. 
Uh, it's not a Ficky airplane either, so it's not approved for flight empty, no icing. It's just optional safety equipment. And then, uh, so we went ahead and did cylinders and brake line without even asking him. Let's see. So for the other stuff, like fuel bladders, there's a 12 week lead time, is that right? Yeah. So I got 12 week lead time on this. So how do you sign off an annual when you have an unairworthy item and the lead time on the park is 12 weeks? So we'll, like in this case, say the owner wants to, hey, I don't think my bladder is bad. I want to fly my airplane. We can sign off the annual inspection as the aircraft is unairworthy, but the annual inspection is completed. And then a list of discrepancies uh, provide to the owner and then he can get any AMP mechanic to sign off said discrepancies. So, and That's then the part 91, good. does it work the same way for part 135 aircraft? No, part 135 aircraft are usually under an inspection program um, and it's usually a phase program and it's more similar to military stuff and airline stuff. Um, but, and part 135 stuff is, it, whatever the op specs is the op specs are their agreement with the FAA as to what they'll operate under and it'll literally be different for each operation each 135 certificate holder will say their own stuff and it'll say what they can and can't do what they have to adhere to and all that kind of fun stuff all right well there it is you asked for annual there's pretty much an annual I'm a good speller. <laughs>